everyone. Welcome back to the TARDIS Blue Couch. It's time for another episode of Comic Book Issues, The Pull List. This week, we're going to be looking at the month of April. And like every pull list, we're going to start with the last week of the previous month, March. So for week one, we're going to look at Vader, Dark Visions, issue two. Dennis Hopeless, now Dennis Hallam, he's decided to drop the pen name and go for his real name, is writing a series of, well, not alternate universe Darth Vader stories, but rather how different people see Darth Vader in the Star Wars universe. Issue 1 follows a young boy who sees Darth Vader as something of a hero when he crashes on his planet. Now, this boy knows nothing about the Empire. He's very kind of primitive, but sees Vader as this hero who came from the stars to save his people from this alien that's awoken, this giant monster that's destroying their planet. Vader doesn't care about them. He's just trying to get back up into space to this battle. He crashed on the planet, and he needs to get back up there, and this monster is in his way. So this boy misinterprets Vader's own self-interests as heroism. Issue 3 follows this nurse who kind of develops this unhealthy obsession with Darth Vader and how trying to get romantically involved with the Dark Lord of the Sith will destroy anyone. Uh, so let's look at the issue between that, issue two. This is a five-issue miniseries, and issue two is drawn by Brian Level. Pfft, nice name, <laughs> Brian. Anyway, a rebel spy escapes with some plans and is being pursued by an Imperial commander. He's wiped out everyone else. This rebel is the only one to get away, and he thinks, okay, that's not too bad. I've destroyed 99% of the rebellion here. But when he gets news that Darth Vader is coming to interrogate the spy, he remembers how Vader killed an earlier Imperial commander for his own incompetence. So he kind of goes nuts and pushes his team to cross any sane boundary to get this spy back. Ends up destroying his command, destroying his people, all in this insane pursuit to get this spy and these plans back, lest he upset Darth Vader. So here it shows that Darth Vader is kind of this boogeyman to the entire Imperial fleet. While the other stories I've read so far have focused on Vader as a source of hope or uh, even an object of love, here it focuses on fear. This commander is going to stop at nothing to appease Vader, pushing his own crew and mission closer and closer to disaster, all in an attempt to avoid his own fate. Here, Vader is a boogeyman to the entire Imperial fleet. Someone with the authority, will, and desire to kill you at the slightest hint of incompetence who will face no repercussions for that murder. My recommendation? Buy this book. It is a lot of fun. There's no ongoing narrative per se. Each issue tells its own story, but it's an interesting idea to take Darth Vader and kind of place him in these different situations and see how other people react to him. There's no ongoing narrative per se, but each issue is a standalone story, focusing not on who Darth Vader actually is, but rather the effect his presence has on the world around him. It's no instant classic, but I'm enjoying it enough to say, buy it, read it, and I think you'll enjoy it too. For week two, it's Giant Killers, a standalone special for $8.00 from Bart Sears' Ominous Press, which is publishing its comics through IDW. So I've said many times that I'm a huge Bart Sears fan. I love his art. So imagine my surprise when I go to a comic book store and see a brand new special from IDW for his new comic book, Giant Killers. I hadn't even heard this was coming out yet. An entire special filled with Bart Sears' art. Well, it's not. This special features three stories set in the Giant Killers universe, and only one of them has any art by Bart Sears. In fact, that one is a prose tale that just features a few spot illustrations along the page that he's done. The first story is a tale of Akron, the Giant Killer, already a legend among his enemies, as he storms a castle to rescue an egg that's going to hatch into this little girl he's destined to protect. It's fine, but the art is by Rick Leonardi, and that art is decent, and the story sets Akron up as a genuine hero in this universe, someone that his enemies take very seriously. The last story follows that little girl, Aurora, who's going to be this great force of good in this universe one day, as she's lured into a trap involving a demon who's possessed kittens. Uh, Megan Hetrick draws this one, and all three are written by Bart Sears. So is this one shot worth the $8 I paid? Frankly, no. I mean, the stories here are okay. There's nothing terrible. Once the miniseries itself starts, whenever that may be, and Bart is drawing it, I'm going to be all over that book. In the meantime, my recommendation? Skip it. Uh, this book isn't anything special. The stories are okay, but I wouldn't pay eight bucks for it. Although I did. I wouldn't have you pay eight bucks for it. I'm going to press by IDW has some other books you might want to check out, though, like Dread Gods and Demigod. Is that the theme? Now, for week three, we've got Catwoman number 10. Now, this book started out very strong with a post-breakup Selena Kyle running from Gotham and herself in a book that was drawn and written by Joelle Jones. Well, ten issues later, Joelle's still writing, but the art in this issue anyways, is by Fernando Blanco, but I'm afraid this book has lost its way. Uh, what was a story about a crime boss setting up Catwoman now involves the Penguin, Selena's comatose sister, corrupt cops, zombie children. Uh, unfortunately, it just doesn't feel like Selena's story anymore. It feels like 
a story about this city and all the things going on it that Catwoman just happens to be in. It's failing to make an impression on me to the point where I'm confused when I open a new issue because I really can't remember what happened last time. My recommendation? Skip it. This book needs to return its focus to Selena Kyle rebuilding her life and please get Joelle back on art because that first arc was great but right now I don't know what's going on. I don't know. The Penguin wanted her to do something and then she double crossed him now. This noseless woman turned one of her kids into a zombie. It's all kind of crazy stuff right now and I'm having a really hard time caring. For week four, it's War of the Realms number two. So every couple of years, Marvel launches its cash grab crossover. House of M, Civil War, Axis. This year, it's War of the Realms following up on Jason Aaron's Thor and Avengers stories. It's crossing over into a ton of books and launching an equally large number of tie-in miniseries. Basically, Melkith the Elf, you know, the ninth Doctor in Thor 2, uh, has assembled all of the Norse mythology villains and they're invading Earth. It's illustrated by Roger Doderman, who drew Aaron's first couple of arcs on Thor when he introduced Jane Foster as the new Thor. Um, she's not Thor anymore, by the way. Uh, there are a couple things I was unaware of since I'm not reading Aaron's Thor book right now. Like, he has this talking dog, and most of Asgard is living in New York City in a kind of TARDIS house that's bigger on the inside. But honestly, you don't really need to know too much of Jason Aaron's Thor run going into this book. They spell it out for you plainly in the first couple of pages. All the bad guys in Norse mythology are now invading Earth. This issue shows the Marvel heroes fighting back against elves, giants, trolls, as well as the death of a longtime B-list hero. The art is crisp, detailed, and it never looks like Doderman is uh, cutting corners to save time on drawing the book. Normally, I don't like crossovers, but two issues in, and the action is heavy, and the characters all feel genuine, the writing's clever, uh, and all the characters feel like they're supposed to feel, so my recommendation, buy it. Or, if crossovers aren't your thing, you could wait for a sale or the eventual trade paperback collection. But for a man who doesn't like crossovers, so far I'm really enjoying War of the Realms. That's April, my friends. Thank you very much for joining me. We'll see you back here in May. Until then, this is Comic Book Issues, The Poll List, and I'm your host, Brian Hines, The Last Angry Geek.